G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. I've been getting a large volume of comments asking why nothing I build works on paper servers. I try my best to ignore these comments, but at some point things start to get a bit overwhelming and I am forced to respond. And what is my response? Let me speak to the people, Hantun. Let me speak. No one's stopping you. They need to hear this. Oh. They need to hear this. One take. I'm not a big fan of paper. 30 on 30. I'm not a big fan of paper. 30 on 30. I'm not a big fan of paper. 30, 30, 30, I'm not a big fan of paper. In case you didn't get the hint, I'm not a big fan of paper. Mainly because I think its developers have their heads jammed firmly inside of their asses. As this modern software built to quote-unquote improve Minecraft's ecosystem continues to plague the lives of anybody who simply wants to play Minecraft and build cool stuff. And I'm not just talking about paper, I am referring to all of the bucket forks like spigot and purple, but paper seems to be the most prevalent. But to understand why paper is a problem, we first need to understand the difference between a client and a server. A client is an instance of Minecraft running on your computer. It interprets your input through the mouse and keyboard, or Xbox controller if you enjoy pain and suffering. Seriously, why would you use a controller for a block game? Building would be an absolute pain. The client sends these inputs to the server, and the server updates the world based upon these inputs, then sends you a snapshot of the world for the client to render. If you play on single player, then the server effectively is the client, and all events within the Minecraft simulation are handled internally on the client. However, if you play on multiplayer, the server is fundamentally separate from the client and runs somewhere else in the world requiring you to connect through the internet. Or it can even run somewhere else in your computer. Paper is a modified Minecraft server. In fact, we are on a paper server right now. The way you can tell is by using the F3 debug screen and up in the top left you will see the text paper server. Another really important detail is my client which you can see in the very top left under minecraft 1.19.4 fabric. If I have some big complex machine like the orbital strike cannon that I want to design and test I will load it up in single player and be sure to use my technical tools to make sure that everything is working as expected. However, because paper is only for servers, there is no such thing as paper for single player, so the only way to test my designs on paper is to run my own local server and connect to it through multiplayer. So here we have the Orbital Strike Cannon on a paper server. If I go ahead and start it up, it just fails immediately, and I don't even have the tools to diagnose the issue. But of course, in this particular situation, we know exactly what the problem is. The problem is that paper developers have a god complex and consider themselves the saviors of Minecraft, sparing us from mechanics like TNT duplication or bedrock breaking, which are apparently unsupported and put your game at risk. At risk from what? I guess TNT dupers can be pretty destructive. But if a server owner wants to disable TNT duping, then they will disable TNT duping. But if you run a fresh installation of paper, these features are disabled by default. And he who controls the defaults, controls the way we play. But at least we have the option to re-enable these features, so let's go ahead and do that. And now, TNT duplication works perfectly. Alright, what the f*** is the problem this time? At least we can use world edit to remove the broken cannon. And then we can use light Madiga to paste back a fully functional one. <laughs> this just keeps getting better and better. Really, my only option is to delete the world file. Oh, and it won't even let me do that. Great. As I was saying, delete the world file. Why is it not letting me delete? The world file. Oh right, yes. I'm running a server. So even though I left the game, the server's still running. God damn it. Alright, now can I delete the world file? Thank you. Good thing I still have a copy of the single player world where the cannon is still fully functional. Now I start up the server again. Start up my Minecraft instance. And join the server. Now, with a fresh copy of the Orbital Strike Cannon, I know that the duper works fine with individual activations like so. 
But how do I figure out what the issue is? Well, if I'm on my single player world, one of the tools I have access to is Carpet, where I can just disable explosion damage like so. With explosion damage disabled, it doesn't matter if something's wrong. The TNT won't destroy the machine that I'm debugging. But on my paper server, I don't have the option to install Carpet to disable explosion damage. And Paper with its infinite wisdom of disabling TNT duping by default to protect us from the nasty TNT explosions does not even give us the option to disable block damage from explosions. I'm sure somewhere there's a plugin that can do this, but if there is one, it's not really making its presence known. So instead, I'm just gonna rig this command block to kill any TNT the moment before it explodes. God damn it! Alright, there we go. Now we finally have a command block that's killing the TNT before it explodes. So now the question is, what the heck is going on here? It looks like the TNT is just completely derping out and then refusing to be processed. Actually, if we enable one of the fabric tools from my client, Mini HUD, we can see a count of the entities in our frame. If we watch the duper, the moment it gets over 100 TNT, we start seeing the weirdness occur. It turns out that in the config file for Spigot, if we search for TNT, would you look at that? There is a default configuration that limits the max amount of TNT that gets processed per tick to 100. If we go ahead and spawn over 100 TNT like so, we can observe as the duper completely roots itself. Let's go ahead and just crank that shit to a, like, I don't know, a gazillion. And if we try the duper now... Oh, right. I have to restart the server. Oh my god, that was excruciating. Now if I start the duper on the fast clock... Oh my god, it works, and it doesn't crap itself. As a final sanity check, let's disable our safety. Enable the duper. And observe as all of our TNT makes it to the chamber. And nothing is exploding. That's a good thing, right? Here's the moment of truth. Let's set ourselves a target. Head over to the nether side of the cannon. Oh god damn it! Remember that paper actually saves the nether as a completely separate world file for some reason. So now the nether side of the cannon actually exists. Let's punch in the settings into the cannon. Realize that we don't have creative no clip. Here we go, settings have been loaded into the cannon. Now if we make sure that the game rule spectators generate chunks is set to false. And we go into spectator. I said disable the game rule spectators generate chunks and go into spectator. Okay, so on a paper server, the game rule spectators generate chunks false is just broken. So unfortunately, we can't even watch the cannon while it runs. So the best we can do is just watch these lamps go around a circle and hope that nothing blows up. And actually, because we're in 1.20.4, we should have. Yes! Look at that! When merging actually adds technical tools to vanilla, paper is forced to adapt! Wow! So in theory our payload should be waiting at the destination. Let's tick freeze like so. Go through the portal. And where is our target? Here it is. Ah! Where's the payload? Let's try that again, but disable auto-firing. So this time, the payload should be waiting for us at the cannon. Let's freeze. Go through the portal. Fly up, and... There is nothing here. 
So if our TNT is anywhere, this command should teleport me to it. Nope, our, our, our TNT has just vanished out of existence. Great. Alright, so trying that for a third time, I'm using the data get command, but I'm running it in the overworld. There is definitely TNT happening in the overworld. I go ahead and tick freeze. Yep, the TNT is still there. Still there. There's our damn payload. Where did you go before? Let's tick. Step. Hopefully it's gone to the target. Come on, surely. Yep, here's our TNT. Oh, but... I don't think that's the target. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, the stab charge just straight up doesn't work. Look, the bottom line is that paper is just fundamentally broken and my cannon tech will never work properly on paper servers. But then the question is, why should people care? There is more to Minecraft than just building cannons to nuke the landscape. And quite likely, if a server has paper installed, then the server owner doesn't want builds like the Orbital Strike cannon reducing it to an apocalyptic wasteland. But paper affects more than just TNT cannons. It affects all redstone builds. And to demonstrate, let's do a WaveTech Servitor Paper Edition. And where better to start than the building housing my office, which also happens to be WaveTech's enormous shulker farm. No, oh, that's actually really surprising. The shulker farm actually works. Hold on, wait a minute. It's dropping barely any shells. Like, holy crap, these shulkers in the middle should have filled up at least three times by now. So I guess paper has turned Minecraft's most powerful shulker farm into one of Minecraft's most mediocre ones. I also noticed that we had a lot of mobs spawning in the nether, so I went ahead and enabled Wavetech's nether mob switch. But of course, the mob switch does not appear to be making any difference whatsoever. Great. Disappointments in the shulker farm aside, let's try out one of Waytech's other amazing assets, the Piston Bolt Network, which we can use to transport enormous amount of resources. Check it out! We're stacking up chest minecarts filled with our shulker shells. That's about 10 chest minecarts filled with shells. And mobs continuing the spawn even though we have a mob switch enabled. Let's switch on the item transportation and transport these items to the nether hub. There we go, we've arrived, and where are our chest minecarts? Wait, where are our chest minecarts? Oh, here they are. Hey! Amazing. So that's our piston bolt network completely busted. Wavetech's enormous 1728 furnace array. Oh, it's doing something. Yep, that's 54 items per cart. The carts are splitting. Would you look at that? It actually works! Oh, never mind. It seemed like it was working for a moment, but yep, completely busted. <laughs> it couldn't even get us a single filled shulker box. Oh yes, let's try out a player cannon. This is gonna go great. Make sure we have our status effects from the enchanted golden apple. Chuck in a pearl. Walk into these cobwebs. <laughs> wow! We need to try that again. <laughs> like, what actually happened? Oh, no, that time it killed me. Great. Whoa, rest in peace. We do a little trolling on Wavetech. Ah, this is a perfect opportunity to try out Wavetech's main storage. Oh yeah, paper's not gonna like this. <laughs> Amazing. Oh god, I can't put it down. I can't put it down. 
All right, importing items into main storage to be sorted. Oh my god, the wireless receiver actually works on paper. I was not expecting that. I guess if the chunk loading works, then we can try an actual sorting operation. As far as I can tell, the item sorter is working. But holy crap, we're almost hitting 40 MSPT. No, no, we are hitting 40 MSPT. Great. As a direct comparison with the exact same sorting operation on the Wavetech server, which uses fabric optimization mods such as lithium, we only hit about 20 MSPT max. And in case you don't believe me, here is Wavetech's main storage item sorter running at full bore, and it's barely making a dent in the server's MSPT. I am just genuinely shocked. I recorded this test after the sequence of clips from the Paper World Tour, and I was fully expecting Wavetech to be around the same performance as Paper. This, however, is just plainly pathetic in terms of Paper being an optimization for Minecraft. Like, holy crap! In case you are curious about how Wavetech gets this kind of performance on Fabric, here are all the mods that we have installed on the server. Anyway, back to the Paper test. Well, so much for Paper being optimized. Oh, and it looks like the chunk loading stopped. Never mind, the sorting system is now completely broken. Oh my god, this would be extremely painful to fix. Yep, that's the alarm for the sorting system, it's thoroughly rooted. And I would know when this sorting system is thoroughly rooted, because I've had to fix it several times on Wavetech. And out of all the times I've had to fix this, it's never been broken this badly. So let this be a warning, do not build a main storage on a paper server. Oh my god, check this out. I just tried to set up Wavetech's gold farm, and it won't even let us use armor stand looting. It just instantly kills the armor stand. Like, what is going on here? But I mean, at least it's able to spawn the mobs. Our dolphin based mass crafting. Oh my god. You get kicked for even spamming the recipe. Alright, if I increase the mass crafting interval, will this work? Maybe? Alright, let's try it. Uh, I mean, I've got the ingredients. Hello? Yeah, it sort of works. After crafting a few batches, I have to reset the crafting grid by reselecting the crafting table. This is... This is not sustainable. Oh my god. Come on, I have to keep the circuit going. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Come on, the little crafter that could. Oh my god, I, I'm crafting so slowly. I'm just crafting so much slower than the machine can handle. Jesus Christ. Did we do it? I think we might have done it. We're not out of the woods yet. We still got the shulker box loading stage. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Please, please go away, go away, go away. No, 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 no. <sighs> Would be nice if the mob switch actually worked. Yeah, get the. Get out of here. And with that, combined with the sound of the main storage alarm behind me, as well as all the mobs crawling around me despite there being a mob switch active, I think you get the point. Paper is just hostile to technical players. And paper developers seem to think it's our fault for not playing on paper servers and finding the issues ourselves. But that is like telling a tradie to go into hell to install an air conditioner, but there's no parking, so they have to park their unit Maccas and carry their tools into eternal damnation on foot. So they just give up and leave, and all the people writhing in hell are left wondering why it's so damn hot all the time. Let me put it this way, the vanilla Minecraft game is the ground we all stand on. Installing a mod loader like Fabric adds foundation which barely impacts where we stand, but offers support to build more features to make the game better. However, installing Paper is like digging a large pit, as by default Paper detracts from the vanilla gameplay experience, and you must pile on plugins and configurations to try and get onto the same level as the vanilla game. 
but it never quite feels the same and many servers opt for digging this pit even deeper because Minecraft is a complex game with complex interactions that cost performance to simulate. And if the purpose of your server is to make money, your incentive is to increase the number of players playing on your server because more players increases the ranking of your server, attracting more players which generates more revenue. But as more players do stuff, the game reaches a limit where it can't handle more players and so you use a modified server like Paper which gives you the option to cut features out of the game. By making the game more featureless, it can handle more players, attracting more players, which feeds the vicious cycle of cutting more content to fit more players. Hoppers become slower, redstone becomes dumber, redstone clocks delete themselves, items are periodically killed, and what you're left with is a server of over 100 players who barely ever see or interact with one another in an environment where nothing redstone related ever works. Something I often hear is that the tech community is a vocal minority and doesn't matter on the grand scale of the Minecraft community. But the counterpoint is that if Minecraft's most popular multiplayer servers are hostile to technical players, then the majority of players are not going to have access to technical features. The main motivation for players doing cool stuff with redstone is the spectacle of it impacting the game with respect to other players. If a server's economy is based on resources, then players will search for a competitive edge for gaining more resources which includes building technical farms. If somebody plays on a PvP server like Lifesteal, then the spectacle of dropping a fat nuke on your enemies is a strong motivator to learn the science and physics of TNT. The bottom line is that cool things are cool, and using cool things is fun. And fun is the ultimate goal of doing anything in Minecraft. I understand if you're a server owner who likes Paper's suite of plugins and have experience with using them. But keep in mind that Fabric is also a diverse modding ecosystem that you can install without needing to compromise on the game itself. I've already demonstrated that Fabric optimizations such as Lithium far surpass paper in performance. Ah, please excuse the MSPT, we have a gigantic world eater running at the moment. Yet another thing that you can't do on a paper server. Anyway, many developers will agree that Fabric is just better to work with than paper's API. You don't even need a modded client to connect to a Fabric server. Demonstrate, here we have the vanilla Minecraft launcher launching a completely vanilla instance of the game. As you can see, completely vanilla title screen. If I connect to the WaveTech copy, which is a fabric modded server, I connect to the server fine. You can verify that I have a vanilla client. And I can even go ahead and enable a modded feature such as carpet, movable block entities. And look at that, I have a completely vanilla client, but I'm able to enable something that you would normally associate with a heavily modded game, such as movable block entities in Minecraft Java Edition. In fact, fabric mods such as Carpet have all sorts of configurations which can be toggled in-game using a command without even needing to restart the server. And would you look at that, a Carpet configuration that disables TNT duping. And I don't even need to restart the server to enable it. Just like that, the Orbital Strike Cannon now no longer works on your server, and its implementation doesn't cause the cannon to crap itself. It's honestly kind of embarrassing how much better fabric mods are at implementing the features that you want for your multiplayer server without ruining the game for everybody. So if you want to create a fun multiplayer experience that doesn't exclude anyone, use a fabric server. And if you're a player looking for a fun multiplayer experience, bear in mind that while this is the game you might want to play, this is the game that most server owners are playing. Well, that was one hell of an exposition. If you're inclined to agree with me, or not, leave a comment down below. But if you join Wavetech's Discord and ask the question about why X doesn't work on paper, you'll probably just get directed to this video, then saw reacted into oblivion. I've already made it clear why we don't design and test things for paper servers, and I hope that will be enough for people to realise how broken it really is. Alright, enough said. Time to get back to making cool stuff and not having to worry about whether it works on paper. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.